Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's movie time. Which one is this today, Dan? We're watching Dune Part 1. Yes. By Denis Villeneuve, ladies and gentlemen. Second one comes out this month, so we're getting started with the first. Absolutely. This is my favorite book, and I love the original movie, so I'm really excited to see how this went, guys. Let's go enjoy it. Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. My planet Arrakis is so beautiful when the sun is low. You can see spice in the air. I see it. That's how you know you've got a hot commodity there. Their cruelty to my people is all I've known. So we have an insurrection here. Typical oppressors. Mm -hmm. The Harkonnens, they became obscenely rich. Richer than the Emperor. Good ambush. And the Fremen are no joke, those guys can fight. This horse has got some firepower too. By imperial decree, they were gone. They had a whole standing army, didn't they? And who will our next oppressors be? That music is haunting too. Yeah. Well, that's way in the future. It's further than the year suggests, by thousands of years further. Uh -huh. If you want it, make me give it to you. Use the voice. Mom, I just woke up. Tough shit. <laughs> Give me the water. water. That was several voices. Almost. He could have just got up and poured himself a glass. Right. <laughs> he went so lazy, you wouldn't have to go through all this. Yeah. The voice sounds good. I was wondering how it was going to sound. The Fremen shared a deep desert with the giant sandworms, known to the Fremen as Shai Hulud. Mm -hmm. Spice brings enormous health benefits. Without spice, interstellar travel is impossible. The most valuable substance in the universe. Interesting looking shit. It's massive. Yeah. So that's what happens when you control the known universe. Guild navigators, okay. I can tell by their orange gas. Okay. And so you can't see their faces, how would you know? Yeah, because they live in orange gas, or the spice gas. Three guild navigators, a total of 1.46 million 62 salaries round trip. Yeah, if they're willing to spend that money, they're not going to let you get out of this. Uh-huh. House Atreides shall immediately take control of Arrakis. Do you accept? I hate his position. He's damned if he does, damned if he doesn't. I know, he can't say no. House Atreides accepts! Atreides! Done. He's looking at a dead man. He looks like he is too. Him doing that was really just signing his death warrant. <laughs> so you're going to Arrakis tomorrow? Yes, I'm going to Arrakis tomorrow. Jason Momoa? As Duncan Idaho? I've been having dreams about Arrakis and the Fremen. I say it's odd he sees a planet he's never been to. I saw you lying dead. Yeah, that's not a good omen. Dreams make good stories, but everything important happens when we're awake. Me and you. Put on some muscle? I did? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Duncan's got a point here, you know, you need to be present of what's going on around you and act accordingly. But if he's having visions, you gotta take that seriously too, because there's a reason for that. By taking Arrakis from the Harkonnens and making it ours, he sets the stage for a war. Yes, he does. It's not a power grab for the Emperor, it's maintaining the power he has. Right. By making an alliance with the Fremen. On Arrakis, we need to cultivate desert power. Yes. Right. They know the land. A great man doesn't seek to lead. He's called to it. Mm -hmm. You'll still be the only thing I ever needed you to be. My son. There you go. He's just happy to have you as his boy. Yeah. I mean, he's got a great point, too. Like, the best leaders are not the ones who seek power. They're the ones who just wield it effectively. Yeah. And that's one of the main points of the Book of Dune, is power itself. Mm -hmm. Someone might imitate my stride. Doubtful. I know the difference. Choose your blade. Give us a song instead. Oh. <laughs> That's a throw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yep. Ah, the slow blade penetrates the shield. That's the main problem with it. Uh huh. I guess I'm not in the mood today. You fight when the necessity arises, no matter the mood. Now fight. There you go. You enemies won't wait for you. I have you. Well, look down, my lord. Yeah, he's got you too. You to join me in death. Okay, so he's not totally unskilled. Who, not... Paul? No, he's been he's been trained by two sword masters all his life. Yeah. You've never met Harkonnens before. I have. They're not human. They're brutal. You have to be ready. They're all scared, but they can't. And they're going into a situation they can't get out of, and they all know it. But man, they've held they've held that place for eighty years. They gotta be pissed about losing it. 
But here's Geedy Prime. Looks like uh, the world of Hellraiser. <laughs> Kinda. Kinda feels like Blade Runner, too. Look in the Emperor. Take everything we built and give it to that Duke! The traitor's voice is rising. The Emperor is a jealous man. If anybody's gonna be popular, it's just the Emperor. Mm-hmm. And you're in bed with him. He, they, they're pretty aware of plans, too. Mm-hmm. This must be the sisterhood coming in. Oh, my. That's a hell of a shot. It's like a procession of sorceresses showing up or something. That's not inaccurate. Paul. Paul, wake up. What's wrong? Get dressed and come with me. Oh, yeah, this. The Reverend Mother Guy Selimoheim is here. He's now truth say to the Emperor himself. That makes her head of the order. What's happening? Not a bad idea to use your battle language right now. Right. If you think you're surrounded by enemies, you definitely don't want to give them any intel. Yeah. Leave us. You must do everything that my Reverend Mother tells you. You dismiss my mother in her own house. Come here. Kneel. Well, her voice works. Oh, yeah. How dare you use the voice on me? Bitch, please. <laughs> That's what that look says. <laughs> Put your right hand in the box. I hold at your neck the gom jabba. Oh. Oh, yeah. Remove your hand from the box and you die. Looks in the box. Pain. Pain. What kind of test is this? An animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. What will you do? Are you suggesting that the Duke's son is an animal? Oh. <laughs> All she's doing is messing with your head, Paul. She can sense it, though. Silence! This is pain by nerve induction. Good lord. I must not fear. Fear is the mind killer. Fear is the little death that brings obliteration. He overcame it. Well, she's trying to see what's really in there, mm -hmm. and now she sees it. Where the fear is gone, only I will remain enough. Good boy, way to man up on that. See, at the end there, it wasn't even bothering him. If you had been unable to control your impulses, we could not let you live. You inherit too much power. Not because I'm a duke's son. Because you are Jessica's son. Because he has been a Jesuit training. Right. And he's got Duke Leto's inheritance. He's way too powerful for any one person. Right. You were told to bear only daughters. You in your pride thought you could produce the Kwisatz Haderach. His sight is barely awakened, and now he goes into the fire. Our plans are measured in centuries. We have other prospects. That sounds like bullshit to me. You wouldn't be here if you had other prospects. I was gonna say, if it's supposed to be like one prophecy being, how can you have multiple candidates? There's no way. Yeah. And that whole power structure there bothers me anyway. The idea that you can control birth. Yeah, I mean, that's going a bit too far. Yeah. For thousands of years, we've been carefully crossing bloodlines to bring forth one. A mind powerful enough to bridge space and time. So her marriage to the Duke was intentional. It was, but then she, but they didn't intend on her falling in love with him. Right. Just kept that underwater, huh? That's an efficient way to do that. If you're if you've cultivated sea power, why not? Kiss all that water goodbye. It's the last water you're gonna see for a little bit. I'd to say I'd hate that. <laughs> Leaving your planet behind? Yeah. It's a beautiful for planet. For this. <laughs> yeah. For your desert planet. Oh great, that's a hair of desert just where I always wanted. Shield! Were y'all expecting trouble during the welcoming ceremony? You did just inherit this from the Harkonnens. Very true. Costuming in this movie is brilliant. I say I like the armor. Their armor is incredible. Why Paul Atreides isn't wearing some either? I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't make much sense, does it? He's just a you're gonna arm, You're gonna armor everybody else up, but not him? Some of the strangest sounding bagpipes I've ever heard. Well, it's being that their house is Greek, I'm surprised to hear bagpipes in general. I mean, they're kind of cool. I mean, I'm not complaining, and it's just an odd tune. Young master, how does it feel to walk on a new world? Exciting. Mentat, master of assassins, Mr. Thufir Hawat. Human computer. <laughs> and boy, they sure believe in prophecies. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love the ornithopters. 
They look like dragonflies. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. I know that's a very practical system, but... Yeah. What are they shouting? Listen, al voice from the outer world. It's their name for Messiah. Yes. They see you, they see the signs. You see what they've been told to see? He's wise beyond his years. I think growing up the way he did will do that for you. Uh, so it's gotta be his mother's training. And his father's too, a little bit. Great sound. Mm-hmm. Desert looks immaculate. It sounds like metallic dragonflies, yeah. Right, this makes perfect sense. Cover, cover your city in metal structures. Yeah. It still feels abandoned, though. That's interesting. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. It's so quiet. That's what worries me, too. What do they say about this hellhole again? It's a shower. You scrub your ass with sand, my lord. That's what they say. No, thanks. I think I'd rather just go back to... Uh, Caladan. Caladan. Yeah. And shower with water. <laughs> yeah, I, I will, too. What is your name? Shut up, mapes, my lady. I know that you have a weapon concealed in your bodies. Whatever you're hiding, it won't be enough. <laughs> How dare you show that blade to her? It's a crisp knife. It's a make. <laughs> tooth of Shahulu. That's a big tooth. Tooth of Shahulu. I'll say this: you're not you're not supposed to show that blade unless you actually mean to draw blood. And by Fremen culture, I mean, how would you know it was a crisp blade if you didn't actually see the blade? That's a fair question. Yeah. I see your point, though. Yeah. To Fremen, they take that shit seriously. Right. So, yeah. The most dangerous organism on Arrakis is the sandworm, capable of reaching 400 meters. Oh, God. Oh, 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 400 yeah. meters? It's a big boy. It's four football fields. The sandwalk, which emulates the natural sounds of the desert's parched, nutrient-poor landscape. It just burned right through the wall. Smart move, kid. Now don't breathe. Its vision is based on movement. It is. Literally. Oh no. Mm. That thing is beyond you 24 hours a day. Yeah. Good catch. Good reflexes. It's a hunter seeker. They made a, an attempt to kill the Duke's kid. Submitted into that hole six weeks ago. Jesus. Man. Tried to take the life of my son! I don't give a damn about your honor. You want absolution? Go catch some spies. I mean, it was a pretty smart way of doing it. I wouldn't have expected that. Oh! There's that thing. The thing must leave. Our pet doesn't understand your language. Get out! Well, I guess it does. Sounds like it to me. <laughs> our trade is with die in the dark. His wife is under our protection, and by extension, her son. Allow them the dignity of exile. That's risky. I give you my word. We will not harm them. But I can't promise the desert won't. Right. Stellan Skarsgård looks amazing. Ah! My Iraqis. All right, show off. The floating fat man. Mm-hmm. Hawking and sabotage slows us down. I want to see these harvesting fields myself. Have this judge of the change accompany us. Judges! Ah, my There you go. You're alive still. Hidden in the desert in a community called the Siege. How big was the place? Say 10,000 people. And there are hundreds of sieges. The Harkonnen estimate was 50,000 on the whole planet. Oh, that's a horrible <laughs> estimate. <laughs> Shows what they know. Yeah. There's no finer fighter in the Imperium. They fight like demons. Well, you've seen them jump up out of the sand. Well, that's what you need for your army right there. Stop there. Hey! Hey! <laughs> Javier Bardem. Yeah. Hold. <clears throat> Thank you, Stilgar, for the gift of your body's moisture. Mm. Okay. Water's precious, so yeah, yeah, it's a gift. Name what you want. Do not seek our sieges. Do not trespass in our lands. Desert was ours long before you came. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, I'm not asking for anything. Just leave us be. Yeah. And you will never be hunted while I govern here. That's very honorable. I must go. That's all I have to say to you. <laughs> it's a very informal meeting. She, she. So you've seen him too. I don't know about a sight. I think it's, again, goes back to prophecy. Yeah. Fierce, but loyal. They're attuned to the desert. It's part of them. And I'm not surprised that they would have technology to help them survive it. Mm-hmm. So that's your carry-all? A little more efficient, I guess. It's the hot air balloon. That's interesting. Nothing but hot air out there. <laughs> I, I mean, that's fair. The judge of the change side, Dr. Liet Kynes. 
Welcome to Arrakis. Thank you for the stole suits. Permission, sire. I must check the integrity of your suit. Oh. Oh, they're not messing around. Mm -mm. He is the Duke. Yeah. High efficiency filtration system. He cycles the water, lust to sweat. Inside the mask, you'll find a tube to allow you to drink the recycled water. <laughs> I'll stick with scotch, thank you. <laughs> Out in the desert, you will definitely die. <laughs> <laughs> then I'll die. Your desert boots are fitted slip fashion at the ankles. Who taught you to do that? Seemed the right way. Well, I guess you should you should know your ways as a porn to them. Part of the prophecy. Uh -huh. You remember when we watched uh, Sicario? Yeah. All these shots felt the same. Like going over Big the Big expansive desert. landscape, yeah. yeah. Denise good at that. Well, it works great in this film because it's so alien. Yeah, their harvesters don't look quite as good as the Harkonnen ones. They look like hand-me-down junk. <laughs> look like one of those Jawa ships. <laughs> right? Or more likely a Jawa ship looks more like that. Yeah. You see these spotter aircraft looking for worm sign. Worm always comes. Always. always. Is that a worm? Oh, there it is. Yep. I see sand. Is that what you see? <laughs> <laughs> Big one. This is spotter one. Worm sign confirmed. He's moving fast, too. Oh, yeah. They'll call a carry-all to lift the crawler. They'll harvest right up to the last minute. That's dangerous. Well, that's their lives, man. Probably pays a lot, though. I bet it does. It's a piece of crap. That's what it is. <laughs> Don't have a redundancy so it'll work without one clamp? How many men on that crawler? Crew of 21. Oh, boy. Gotta go get them. Oh boy, yeah, that's, nothing lives out there except for worms. Yeah, There's no time to be enticed by the desert. He can't help it. See all the spice in the sand? Yeah, I see it glistening. We're out of spice, we can't just leave. Damn the spice! I want every man off that crawler now! Yeah, we can always get more spice. Yeah, getting crews is gonna be harder. Here comes a maker. Man, you just took a big whiff of spice. Oh, yeah. And in his state, that's not the thing to happen right now. The voices aren't helping. No, we don't need prescience when a worm's coming. <laughs> I know he said that about Gurney at the beginning. Uh -huh. I wonder if he was honestly talking to the worm because of his prescience. Maybe. Bless the maker and his water. May his passage cleanse the world. Good God. Look at the teeth on that thing. The world for his people. You can make a lot of Chris knives out of one tooth. Yeah, you could. Oh, man. It's a monster. It looks like an ancient monster. Uh -huh. It's a creature of legends right there. Yeah. I had a vision. What did you see? Oh, she stabbed him. In that vision, yes. Someone will hand me a blade, but I don't know who. Good look for you, Jessica. Eerie look. I know you're pregnant. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you can't do that. I bet you know that. It's only been a few weeks. Yeah, he sees a lot. <laughs> well, that spice really kicked in his visions, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it did. Imperial Army Planet. The Sardaukar Planet. They have their own planet? Yeah. Well, it's a prison planet, but yeah. <laughs> These guys are freaking nuts. Yeah, they look like they're about to go on crusade. Look at Good that. Good God. Are they just draining these guys for blood to put on everyone else? Yes. Betrayed these legions are the finest in the Imperium. That sounds very robotic in terms That's what I thought, too. Atata. <laughs> Only if you do the blinky blinks again. <laughs> he had one eye that blinked upward and the other one did the down. Oh. I should have married you. Wait, you're not even married? Nope. You guys have a teenage son. Oh, they got infiltrator. There goes the power. And the shield generator. Yep, something's about to go down. Okay. Power. Oh no. Shut out Mapes. Get it. Get it. He can't reach it. Oh no. 
slow blade ben penetrates the shield. There's nothing you can do. You even took precautions. It didn't help. Oh, Dr. Huey. That's right. It's one of his own men. He's been next to, next to Jessica all this time. You know what's messed up about that? That diamond signifies Imperial conditioning, which means he has the highest level of trust. Oh, no. Oh, my oh, God. No. That looked atomic. There's a massive explosion. Harkonnens are here. Come on, where's your weapons? Jesus. The shields are worthless against those bombs. Oh no. Well, you totally unprepared for that. Go kick their ass, Gurney. Go get them, boys. To the death. Here we go. Take as many of them down with you as you can. Oh, they got good discipline, though. I like the formation, yeah. Okay. It's like an old school phalanx. Behind you! You're surrounded. Yeah. They're dead now. Oh my Jeez. god. Well, that took no time. I had no choice. Harkonnens, I have my wife, Mona. Oh, yeah. I'm going to replace your back tooth. You will fill the air with poison. It will be your last breath. It will also be the Baron's. Okay. okay. Well, it's going to be painful taking that out and putting that in. Just a little bit. I saw the pointy tips on that thing. Yeah. Got like two inch prongs on there. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. So much for the hope. They don't care about the sacred trees. Nope. They wouldn't take care of them anyways. Here's one guy you won't get past, though. All right. Come on, Duncan. Show him how it's done. Best. Get around it. There you go. He's the best in the land at this. True sword master, if there ever was one. Oh, they captured him already. That is your battle language. That's what I expect. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not good. If he's deaf, he's not... He's impervious to the voice. Right. That's the one you have to kill first. Oh my Good god. god. The rain of hellfire out there. You're just killing innocent people at this point. It's destroying the whole city. Get him, Duncan. Sarconans can't fight worth the shit. Come on, there's like an idiot all out there. There you go. Yeah, make them pay for it. But those lasers shouldn't exist. That's... I guess the Emperor is making exceptions for this incident. I've never had a highborn. You? Let be the kid to the world. I give her a long goodbye. Jesus. Don't you dare touch my mother. <laughs> Don't talk. You can't hear anyway, so shut up. <laughs> there you go. Her voice will work just fine. Kill him! Oh, nice. All right. Give me the knife! There you go. Your pitch was too forced. It worked. <laughs> he figured it out. In a moment like that, beggars can't be choosers. I thought they got a lot further than that. Apparently not. Yeah, there's no going back, though. Mm -mm. You'll die if you go back. Which might die out here, too. There's a diamond. This is Dr. Yue's handwriting. If anyone makes it out of Arakeen alive... There's an Atreides speaking in the front kids. So Dr. Yu, he didn't fully betray in in bot in mind. He did what he had to to meet his obligation, but yeah. he's still with the Atreides. I said I'd set her free. That you could join her. So join her. I knew you couldn't trust this guy. He used that little knife. Right through, yeah. That's pretty strong. <laughs> your son is dead. Your concubine is dead. Tonight the house of Atreides falls. And your bloodline ends forever. That's what you think. It was a good try. <laughs> oh, he penetrated anyway. It's slow moving. You took out their Mentat too. Good. Make them pay for it. If you're going to go down, take as many of them down with you as you can. Unfortunately, you inherited, it inherited the power this way. Yep, it's yours now. Come to clean up the bodies. Just a hazmat crew, really. Looks like one, too. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> I guess he got above it, huh? Chicken shit bastard. <laughs> you know, their hazmat suits look very similar to the uh, Sardaukar suits from the 1984 Dune. Yeah. <laughs> I think it might be a callback. Maybe. Oh, that looks so cool. They got a whole army coming out of the sand. Yeah. Ooh, look at their fighting skills. Jesus. Lethal. He's a monster there. Yeah, you see the worm behind him? Yeah. See their... See his Fremen are on a different world here? So they're back on Caladan. Or another world. Yeah. Because there is a big jihad up in the books. I see the only war spreading across the universe like unquenchable fire. Fanatical legions worshipping at the shrine of my father's skull. A war in my name! I know. Let's take up a burden to carry. A holy war being fought in your name? Yeah. You know who you are. Get off me! You did this to me! You Bene Gesserit made me a freak! Control yourself, Paul. Paul, you were made out of love. Yeah. What they gave you, they gave you to, to help yourself. Frame tent works kind of like a still suit for everybody. So it, it recycles your moisture in the air. All right, well, this is not going to die of dehydration anytime soon. Well, not tonight. But <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, a little Muadib. Well, he's hot too. They survive out there by. That's how they get water. Oh, it's to get them out of being covered by the sand. My lady. Paul. Oh, I'm so sorry. My Lord Duke. That's right. You are Duke now. Uh huh. It's a happy day that Duncan's still alive too. There was Sardaukar with them. Are you sure? You cross swords with the Sardaukar. You know. You know it. Uh -huh. Yeah. What says the touch of the change? The Emperor forbids me from saying anything at all. And yet you risk your life to help us. Some judge you are. Appointed by the Emperor? <laughs> it's no judge. It's an old ecological testing station. Free the water locked beneath the sands. Arrakis could have been a paradise. Then the spice was discovered. We can get water somewhere else. You know what the great houses fear most, Dr. Kynes. Exactly what has happened to us here. And Sardaukar coming and picking them off one by one. Yep, which is why they won't say anything. Uh-huh. Furman speak of the Lusan al -Gaib. Superstition. You sure believed in it earlier. Uh-huh. Oh, I know you loved a Fremen warrior and lost him in battle. I've seen your dream. As Emperor Dr. Kynes, I can make a paradise of Arrakis with a wave of my hand. Well, that spice is really going to his head, isn't it? Well, for now it is, huh? Yeah. The Sardaukar found you. That is so eerie. I know, it's freaky as hell. They just come down like that, like nothing. Oh, shit. They got him. Man, you guys good. aren't so tough. Those Fremen, man. <laughs> no! Duncan! No! Duncan, no! He's got to, boy. Yeah. Duncan, no! He's got to put distance between you and them. You serve nobody but dying here, Paul. He'll take as many of them out as he can. Oh, he is too. Oh, no. Took on the whole squad. Whoa. More lasers. Jesus. We're gonna tear that's this a, place apart. It's a powerful laser. Damn. Get him. You did well, Duncan. Yeah. He did his job. Yeah. Here's to you, Duncan. Went down like a man. Follow the light. You'll find a thopter ready to fly. I'll go to the next station and report this attack to the Land's Wrath. You could have reported this a long time ago, but you didn't. Well, it doesn't mean the Fremen would have gotten involved, but if the prophesied one is out there in need of help, they might. Yeah. Thumper, baby. Mm. Yeah, let's let the worms do the work now. Well, she's wanting to hitch a ride. Oh, okay. She's not calling it to say hello. <laughs> <laughs> See? Okay. Oh. oh no. <laughs> what a brave one you are, Sardaukar. God, you know you I serve only one master. His name is Shai Halud. Mm-hmm. You're about to meet him. <laughs> we can die together. 
And they're going to. Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. There they go. Man, it's a scary thought. The ultimate Sarlacc. Just about. The jet flares behind us. Oh, they found you. Are they willing to follow you into that storm? Yep, they're not willing to. All right. Well, the wind got rid of the missiles. Yeah, problem is you're catching all the debris right now. Yeah. All right, this is the wrong time for visions. We must move with the flow of the process. We must join it. Yes. Wise words. See, sometimes the visions help. Yeah. Roll with the storm. Don't resist it. Just let it blow you around. Won't do any damage. What the hell are you? <laughs> the musical instrument? Not you. No, the person. Oh, the person holding it. Weird androgynous thing. <laughs> I mean, they all kind of are. Look like one of the binars. <laughs> I can see that, yeah. We chase them into our Coriolis storm. If you listen closely enough, you can hear people being tortured. I heard it. Somebody Jeez. screaming in the background. Now squeeze, rather. Squeeze hard. Yes, Uncle. And the vermin. Kill them all. I think you are setting yourselves up for failure now. Yeah, if you think you're gonna fight millions of fremen, you're in for a bad time. Oh, no. You better hope those other two wings hold up. Literally a wing and a prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Run for the rocks! Uh oh. Okay, just a prayer. Yeah. <laughs> Smart move. Your only move right now. Yeah. And they appear to actually have still suits. Good. Came prepared. All right. Those worms always show up, don't they? Yeah, they're just always there. Yeah, this can't be good for the baby. If she survives, she'll be one tough baby. It's a big if, considering the conditions they're going through. Well, they have children out there. <laughs> yeah, they can keep their children underground where they're safe. We're about to enter worm territory. We'll have to walk like the Fremen do. It's called a sand walk. Walk like an Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> Walk like an Iraqi and walk without rhythm and the worm won't find you. <laughs> so Christopher Walken, there was a fun little skit where he was actually dancing around. Uh -huh. Some of the lyrics were actually walk without rhythm and the worm won't find you. Oh no. This was a couple of years before he ever knew he was going to be the emperor. Oh, that's funny. The problem with walking without rhythm was it takes forever to get anywhere. Well, time to learn patience <laughs> in the desert. <laughs> oh. He's from sand. <laughs> oh, okay. Run! Nothing you can do about it. Jesus. That is a big worm. Someone set off a thumper. Well, that means somebody else is out there. He's gonna go away. Yeah, you guys aren't alone up there. Yep. Uh-huh. Yeah, they got you surrounded. Do not run. You will only waste your body's water. There's still Gar. Well, they found the right man. Yep. You help us off-world, you will be well rewarded. What wealth can you offer beyond the water in your flesh? More water. I doubt they have access to space flight, though. Boy is young. He can't learn our ways. But the woman isn't trained. You want to F around and find out? Go ahead. Yep. And you found out. I think she can handle herself. That's that weirding way. Why didn't you say you were a weirding woman? Our conversation ran short. Yeah. <laughs> It happens when you try to stab somebody. Didn't exactly ask. Oh my. Whenever you pull that knife, it has to draw blood. I would not have let you hurt my friends. 
Well, there you are. Hello, Vision Woman. I invoke the Untal. Jummies, don't do this. Yeah, your pride's getting in the way. Yeah. Where is our champion? This is needless bloodshed, man. His honor demands it. Uh, doesn't seem very honorable, but his call. There's a bell in your head. One of the versions of the battle. Mm -hmm. Atreides must die. The Greece had had a to rise. Put aside who you are and become the person you're supposed to be. Right. When you take a life, you take your own. I don't believe you're the Lison Al Gaib. But I want you to die with honor. Take it. Well, that was part of the prophecy he saw. Mm -hmm. It's made from a tooth of Shai Halud. This will be a great honor for you to die holding it. Well, you assume he's gonna die. Jonas is a good fighter. He won't let you suffer. Gee, thanks. You have so little faith in this guy. You don't know him. I know. May thy knife chip and shatter. Yeah, not bad, but he's trained by sword masters. You haven't gotten an advantage yet. There's no yielding under the Amta rule. Only death is the test of the. Oh boy. Yeah, you gotta kill him. That just feels like you're playing. It does. You should be toying with him. No, Paul has never killed him. Well, today's the day. If you don't kill him, he will kill you. Arise. There it is. Way to be with him, though. He's not your enemy. He was looking out for his people, let's say that. Yes. Well, and winning something like this gets you accepted by everybody else. High price to pay, though. That's just their ways. Mm -hmm. Not too high for them, it's just how they do it. You're one of us now. A life for a life. My father came, not for spice, but for the strength of your people. My road leads into the desert. Say, so this is what you need to beat the Harkonnens. There's your power. Oh, yeah. This is only the beginning. That's desert power like the Emperor's <laughs> never seen. Right. Good luck fighting that thing. Good start. Well, it's just the beginning. There's a whole lot to get get to yet. You ain't seen nothing. If the if the books are any indication, you ain't seen nothing. <laughs> well, we got a few things to discuss here. Just a few? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a lot that happened here, uh -huh. and as you would expect, because it is based off of a off of a book, there's a lot that that we didn't see here. Well, there's probably a lot, too, that I don't understand. And probably a lot of people don't understand because I haven't read the book. I know you have. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of different ter terminology in here that would not be familiar to the average person. Exactly. For instance, some of the schools or some of the ways of teaching, I guess, there are because mm -hmm. that's important to know their world. Obviously, you have the Bene Gesserit there. Mm -hmm. You have the Spacing Guild. Mm -hmm. You have Mentats. You have Swordmasters, things of all that. These are all people that go to skills for certain or schools for certain honing of skills so the sword masters actually have like an academy out there in the universe they have a whole planet okay dedicated to that practically even the sardaukar their planet is Seleucus secundus here mm -hmm. which is a prison planet but they're the emperor's blades they get to that gets to be their life if they if they survive the training and the training is no joke okay um it's been known to kill lots of people. That's probably whose blood they were using up there too when they were anointing themselves for battle. It could have just been prisoners that they sat that they executed. Sacrificed? Okay. Executed and just decided this would be good for this. Mm. So yeah. But you're right. It could have been that too. I wouldn't doubt it at all, but this this is just one of their things and I don't know if that was the battalions that they sent out. That could have just been a graduation ceremony. <laughs> oh no. Honestly. <laughs> so that's how crazy they are. Yeah, they look pretty crazy. Yeah. Except for Duncan, nobody really stood a chance against him. Now, Duncan's... We didn't see much of a relationship between Duncan and uh, Jessica here. Mm -hmm. But in the books, they didn't trust one another really very much. Duncan didn't trust her because she was Bene Gesserit. Which is understandable. Yeah. I mean, they're pulling so many strings behind the scenes, I wouldn't trust them either. Yeah, but I mean, for the sake of the movie, we had to move on from that. Right. 
One thing they didn't show was the, uh, there was actually a big din uh, a big Imperial dinner scene. I, don't, I wouldn't say it's Imperial, but there were members from Houses of the Landsrot there. The Landsrot being a collection of all the uh, political houses in the universe mm -hmm. that, that pay homage to the uh, to the Padisha Emperor. So okay, that would be who they are. And the the Trades belong to the Landsrot, just like the Harkonnens do. Mm -hmm. But they're obviously old old uh, old enemies there. Right. So, but they all came to to a big dinner there, and there was everybody there from the Chome Company, which is the company that provides them all their uh, spice mining equipment, mm -hmm. uh, along with like the water mongers. These are people that profit from bringing water to the planet. Mm -hmm. So they all, it's just a big swanky dinner. And I think they were dressed up for it when, oh, what's his name there? Uh, their mentat was uh, Bufi Hawat mm -hmm. when he was trying to resign. And I think they were actually dressed up for that dinner. Oh, okay. That but they didn't have that. But that would have been a good thing to see too because it, you do get to meet other members of the uh, of the houses. It certainly so. adds on to the lore of the world. Yeah. yeah. And you get, and that's also the first, one of the first times you're introduced to the emperor's daughter. Mm-hmm. Because she goes to that dinner as well. Oh, okay. So, and she meets Paul. So. Okay. But we won't do that until sometime in in part two there. Yeah, seems that way. Yeah, that's just some of the terminology that you get there, mm -hmm. along with all that. If that help, if that helps you get through it at all. Uh, but like I was saying, with Chris knives, you saw them at the end there, kind of all everybody cut themselves a little. Yeah. Because that part of their uh, part of their belief system is because the because the worm is sacred to them. Mm -hmm. They don't draw those knives unless they mean to draw blood. So whenever they sheath them, they have to have blood on. That's why they all cut themselves. Right. Like that. And that's just part of their respect to their deity, which is the Shai Hulud, the maker or the worm in this case. Mm -hmm. So that's just part of them paying respect to it. And that's why you said it was kind of strange that she was, that one servant was showing the blade to Jessica because really you shouldn't be doing that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But if she was pulling that out for any other reason and meant no intention of blood, you can interpret that however you want, I mm. think. For me, I think you can go about it a couple of ways. I think it could have just been like, I'm willing to sacrifice a portion of what I believe in to see the prophecy come come to fruition. I know I'm not going to draw blood, but I'm going to show you this to see if you are going to live up to the prophecy. See if she understands the meaning of it. Yes. And, yeah. Okay. Yes. And if Jessica truly understood the meaning of it, because she called it a maker, which mean, tells me she understands. Mm -hmm. But I would have thought she would have called her out for not putting blood on the knife. Yeah. Even you, if it was her own. Right. You think she would have just grabbed it and just kind of cut herself a little bit just to fulfill the, the oath of it. But Yes. But nonetheless. Uh, Stilgar mentioned their sieges. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar? Are you kind of familiar with what that is? Well, I got the gist of it from the show. It's pretty much their underground dwellings. Yes. Yeah. Yes. They got a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of people in each one of them. And that's kind of why they they're masters of the desert out there because they know how to live. They know how to thrive out there, right? Pretty much, but they also know how to survive when it's necessary. And I think that's part of their faith too is to walk in, is to walk and be among the desert and survive it because mm -hmm. that brings you closer to your faith or if you're fremen for that matter, right? But they do have lots of water. Mm -hmm. They have what what are called wind drafts. You know, you, you saw how the the little uh, desert mouse was collecting water in its ears. Yeah. I think the wind drafts work kind of similarly. Okay. In that nature in that nature because it brings all the moisture out of the air into into it like these big it down. Yeah. yeah. And they got these giant underground caverns where all that water sits. Okay. Uh, water is deadly to worms, mm -hmm. at least to baby ones, uh, but it's necessary, and you'll see why later on. I'm just not going to go into that yet because I want to see how they do what they're about to do. Okay. But the things I'm looking forward to going forward, though, mm -hmm. I want to see a spacing guild navigator in the flesh. Like, I want to see what one of the uh, third class navigators look like because they're supposed to not look human at all anymore, almost blob like. Interesting. So the Spacing Guild, they have a heavy emphasis on pure mathematics, mm -hmm. and they use spice to help them navigate obstacles in space without without the use of a thinking computer. That's interesting. Yeah. The reason for that is a term called the Butlerian Jihad, mm -hmm. which occurred thousands of years in the past when humanity had come to a big point in their civilization where they had artificial intelligence basically doing all the work for them, so they got really lazy. Yeah. As you would expect artificial intelligence to do. 
it decided, why should we be serving you? Right. And started killing humans. Humans rose up and took control again. Thus, you have what's called the Butlerian Jihad. But in this case, it meant practically purging the universe of all thinking, of all computers in the likeness of a human. So basically, they had their Terminator moment when they overcame it. They did. And they set rules for good, for their governance there, uh, thereafter. I guess that makes sense. The technology in the show is you know, kind of weird overall. Because we see them fighting with knives and shields, despite them being so advanced that they have like long-distance space travel. Mm -hmm. But they're using knives, they're using these shields. You don't see a whole lot of like actual guns. They do have them, but you don't see them in use very much. So, I'll get to that here in a second. And I, and I imagine the guns have something to do with the shields too, because the shields are designed for, what, high speed? Yes. High speed defense? Yes. But, but you saw that they had darts that could penetrate slowly, and they're designed to do that. Right. The reason they're fighting with knives is because of the shields. Mm -hmm. When you and the reason I was calling them out on those lasers when like you shouldn't be having those when those lasers meet a shield, the reaction is atomic. Really? Yes, it's very dangerous and it can cause serious problems. So they shouldn't be having things like that. So that's kind of why I was calling them out on that. That's why they. That's why you see the use of, of blades overall. So they're in the rescue, like destroying the whole place if they hit him by accident. Well, you don't want to render the spice inert. Right. From, through nuclear radiation there. So, right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why I'm sitting here looking at the Harkons. I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> you know? Get a blowtorch. He's got his damn shields on. Yeah. He'll destroy Arrakis. Oh, <laughs> God. I don't know about Arrakis, but you will definitely destroy Arakeen. Mm hmm You know, if, if they hit that shield, I mean, probably wouldn't have happened in the movie, but that's what would have, would have happened. Interesting. So That's a very serious risk there. Yeah. But, I mean... Their technology looks weird because they're not using computers to actually do the work for them anymore. Right. They're using themselves. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they can do this, the only way that they can navigate through space, the only way the Bene Gesserit can control birth through genetics... Is with Spice. Is with Spice. They found out that its psychoactive metaphysical abilities mm -hmm. can help you break through barriers mentally. You basically become superhuman whenever you use this stuff. I guess that's one way to look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, in Paul's case, it certainly is because he's going through prescience right now. Right. He doesn't know it's prescience because to him it's just visions that are scaring the hell out of him. But he's starting to accept it mm -hmm. is what it looks like. Uh, when he learns to actually interpret everything he's seeing, which he kind of started doing there, he'll be unstoppable. So take the... Uh, Take the Bene Gesserit. They're secretly in control of the whole universe. Mm -hmm. And the Emperor th the Emperor doesn't think so. But if they can control birth like that, they can do a lot more. Well, you saw Lady Jessica use it. They have a uh, martial arts of their own called the Weirding Way. Yeah. It looks a lot cooler than what you saw there. She's actually, she's actually made, able to move so fast that it makes everybody look like they're moving in slow motion. So it's more like the Matrix almost. Just about. Yeah. That's how I would have interpreted it mm -hmm. when I saw it. Uh, she just makes everybody else slow down and she kicks all their asses. She also has a metaphysical ability through the voice there. Mm -hmm. All Bene Gesserit are trained to do that. She trained Paul to do it, obviously, too. Right. Because he is the Kwisatz Hatteract here. So mm -hmm. the universe is super being. So. But those are just some of the gifts they have. Now, the whole thing about his hand in the box there, mm -hmm. that's Bene Gesserit training, too. They will hold a Gom Jabbar at your neck while they're doing it mm -hmm. because they want to see if you can control yourself. Because you have that's that's a that's really kind of a final almost a final test for Bene Gesserit. Uh -huh. There's two final tests for them, uh, but this is one of them where they put their hand in the box and it's like if you're gonna have power, you're gonna learn to control yourself. Right, because you don't want somebody who's corrupt running around with those abilities. Yes, if yeah. you pull your hand out, that tells me that you're scared of dying uh -huh. and you're or that you're more concerned about yourself and you're more likely to make decisions that yes. are for your personal gain, not for others. Exactly. Yeah. So that's part of the reason why they do that. By by the way, fam, everything I'm saying, feel free to feel free to challenge it in the comments, guys. I'd love to hear your interpretations too, because everybody's interpretations are different. Mm -hmm. uh, but another way, especially if, if you're going to become a reverend mother, uh, one of the uh, other tests that they do is taking the water of life, which we'll see in the second part. Right. So I don't want to break that down just yet. Well, I mean, I saw it in the Fincher version, so I have an idea what you're talking about here, but yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Well, then you <laughs> kind of know what it is there. Yeah. So no spoilers for you, then. Yes. All right. Well, not much. I mean, this one does have a lot more depth to it than that movie did, so there's stuff going on here that I was not familiar with. Sure, sure. But contrary to what people think, Spice is not fuel. <laughs> it's just... 
It's a substance that they consume, and it also prolongs your life. It's just drugs. Just about. <laughs> Problem with spice is that once you start taking it, you can't stop. Mm -hmm. So it's like drugs. Yes. But if you stop, it will kill you pay very painfully. Mm. There's no getting away from it once you start. Interesting. Yeah. Fortunately, what that means for the Fremen, since they just breathe it in all the time, yeah. they can't ever leave, <laughs> yeah. you know? I mean, they can, but they but they need spice. That, at least that's my interpretation. They have to bring a backpack full of it just to keep them alive till they get back. It's just bad stuff. There's yeah. no reason to get on it ever, <laughs> unless you're unless you're trained to be a Bene Gesserit or a or a Mintat or something. Mintat, you you saw the little what looked like a tattoo there. Yeah, that's actually just a stain because they drink a a substance called the juice of Safu, which stains their lips, but it allows them to. Uh, how did how did Brad Dourif say it? He said. It's through this juice that thoughts acquire speed, mm -hmm. I think. So that's how he's able to compute. You know, it's how they're they're able to do it. They drink that juice. I don't know where it comes from though. So interesting. Okay, but spice is still a part of their of their existence, I think. But they are just basically computation, human computation tools there gotcha. to do the work of a computer. Gotcha. So like all those algorithms they can break that a computer can break down in seconds, they can do. Mm -hmm. So yeah, be, and that's all because of the Butlerian Jihad. Instead of using technology to better your lives, you have to rely on yourselves from now on. Right. Well, that's fine. It makes yeah. it interesting to see. Yeah. But now you understand a little bit more why the tech looks the way it does. Right, right. I mean, but tech aside, one thing I really liked about this film was the production values. Just like the scale of everything. Massive. The massive expanses of desert. The massive worms. Mm-hmm. The huge ships. I don't think they built a single worm. I'm pretty sure it's all CGI. I'm sure it is too, but they look cool. Yeah. And that's one of the things I liked about the Fincher version, is that they actually built some parts of the worm. Yeah. And I kind of liked it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fair. I, I'm all for practical effects when you can do it. Considering the size of these, you're saying these things are like 400 meters long, I don't know if you can do that practically. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. If you want to be rich and not profit from spice, mm -hmm. just bring water. You bring water? Bring water. Because the Fremen value that more than anything. I say there's always a need for that on a desert planet. Yeah. If you can give them more water than they've ever seen, uh, mm -hmm. you'll be friend, probably be friends with them forever. Now, if I were, if I were the Duke, that'd have been the first thing I'd have brought is shitloads of water from my planet because we got plenty to spare. Just offer Stilgar like five barrels. So here you go. Are you kidding? I would have been like Stilgar. I've got fifty ships like the ones we came in, all filled mm -hmm. with water. Where yeah. would you like them? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Been like my gift to you. Yeah. In return that you don't try to kill us. <laughs> I say you get some friends right there. Or at the very least, it's like, let's not kill each other. Here's some water. Yeah. It's like, I accept your spit, but you can have the water. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll take the spit, but, uh, you know, I got something better. Yeah, right. The music, too. Yeah, this is Hans Zimmer. Yeah. The, the music just adds an air of mystery to everything that's going on. And it's got that good Middle Eastern vibe, too, which fits with the desert look. I thought so, too, but I thought my favorite moments were when they weren't in the desert. Mm -hmm. Like, I thought you had some really good ambient epic uh, dark moments when you were on uh, Caladan mm -hmm. and they just re you could really get lost in lost in the uh, in the void well even just the the uh, music that we heard when we saw the soda car for the first time oh god like because it sounded like Mongolian throat yeah noises there and I thought that was perfect for them it's very ominous and I liked it you don't hear that much in a movie you know you really don't you figured that would have caught on big time after this you certainly they should use it in more films i don't know why they wouldn't no because it's part of the world i mean yeah it's a you know the movie movies like this are a good way to experience what your own world has to offer to make to bring the world to life mm -hmm. but i thought it was cool like that you're right that's a moment i think a lot of people enjoy yeah and i bet they do really really adds to the the cultures that are all here yes we've really only seen a couple of planets there so. True. I mean, like you said, you know, we did miss out on the dinner. We did miss out on some opportunities to see some of the other people that are out there. Yeah. But, you know, for what you have, I mean, it's a very complicated story. Yeah. And this is only the first half of it. <laughs> you can only do so much. I know. But, I mean, I was really hoping in this in this part one we would have visited Kaitan. Mm -hmm. That's where the uh, that's where the emperor, emperor lives. Mm -hmm. So that would have been cool. But I'm sure we'll see it soon enough. So. Yeah. We got Gidi Prime, nonetheless. And it... That looks like what you would expect the Harkonnen's planet to look like. You know, because they've ravaged it and paved over it and turned it into a big black luxury, it's luxurious a, palace. It's a giant industrial center, basically. Just about. And see how they're all bald? Yeah. I want, I, as much as that's part of their culture, I almost wonder if it's also just part of, like, their health. 
like, are you just, are you all just like in poor health over there because you're too industrial? Constantly breathing in smoke fumes all day long. You see how they're, how pale they are. Yeah. Yeah, so. I just assume they paint themselves, but I mean, that's natural as good. I don't know if it's natural. It could, it could be genetic manipulation. Maybe. Honestly, that's, that's a part of what they do. But there are planets out there that focus, that, that focus on different things for the Imperium. Mm -hmm. uh, like there's an entire planet that focuses on genetic man uh, manipulation. You remember that freaky pet they had? Yeah. There's a planet out there that that actually creates shit like that. Mm. It's, it's weird. It's gross. <laughs> they, they're they're a bunch of weirdos on that planet. Uh, I forgot what they're called, but there's a. I remember the name Eex mm -hmm. is another planet. I can't. Rem and they got a planet out there that makes all the little technical gadgets and gizmos they use. So. Right. Yeah, it's kind of cool. You know, everybody focuses on different things. Yeah. Some people just focus on living their best lives, like they do on Caladan. So. I say, I like Caladan. It's a nice looking little place. It would have been just fine to me. Yeah. It's like, yeah, miss, just go fishing and, and have water. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> well, thank God, no sand. Yeah. <laughs> It'll definitely be a part two, and I hear there's going to be a part three. So Part three to this movie? It looks like this one comes to a conclusion. Do you mean there's going to be a Doom Messiah? Yes. Oh, then there's a book two coming. Yes, that. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> For now, I hope you enjoyed this movie, guys. We certainly did. Like I said, this is my favorite book. Uh, I've gotten through this book and Doom Messiah. Beyond that, I'm lost. <laughs> I have no clue what else comes after that. I just know that the Dune verse goes thousands of years into the future from here. So, Damn. Paul Atreides is not where it starts. That's just the beginning. Chani said it correctly. This is only the beginning. She meant it. Yes. He's, an, he's not even a flicker in your mind later on. So, As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing and help our channel grow. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like and hit the bells to receive notifications every time we drop a new one. And should you feel compelled to give us a piece of your mind, do so in the comments, guys. While you're at it, take a look at us on our socials. We're on Instagram and TikTok. Come see what we're up to over there, guys. But as always, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. We'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. Later, guys. Later, guys.